Hey guys, what's up? So I have a discussion, kind of, not really. Anyway, uh, a topic I just want to hit on real quick. Um, uh, something I probably wish that I would have thought about a little bit more earlier on. Um, I don't know, just one of those things. So basically, the question is, beat around the bush, um, should you buy, if you're, if you're in the market for this kind of stuff, if you like these kind of things, NFA items, should you buy a suppressor or should you buy an SBR? Okay, because yes, those are both NFA items. They both require basically the exact same paperwork, um, the exact same cost as far as taxes and stuff. Um, but like, what's the benefit to owning one versus owning the other? You know, and if you could only have one, what would you spend your time and your money on? You know, um, I first got into this whole game, okay, whenever I SBR'd a pistol that I had. Um, an AR, the, the seven and a half inch SBR. I've done a video on that before. And about the same time, a little bit before, I had gotten a suppressor. Okay. And so I'll just tell you real quick, I'll try to keep it short ish, ish, um, about why I chose one and why I chose the other. Okay. So basically, long story short, I tried doing this before and it was like, took way, way, way too long. But long story short, um, I started out with an AR pistol, okay? That's what that's what I had initially. I used that with the sheriff's office and stuff. I qualified with it, I carried it, I used it, and all that kind of stuff. And it worked just fine. No issues. The only issue I had with it particularly was that it, um, it didn't like metal mags. The GI mags, it didn't like those. But other than that, it worked just fine. And it was great. It was very short, very maneuverable, great. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, I decided that I wanted to go with an SBR. I wanted to SBR it, okay? At the time, I just had a pistol um, extension on it with the the old SIG, the big, hunky rubber brace thing on it, okay? And it worked okay. It was just big and clunky and looked obnoxious. But it worked. No issues, okay? And this was before the whole, like people got stupid and asked the ATF permission to shoulder it, you know, why they did that. I have no idea why people would ask the ATF that. Um, but it was before that, so I was shouldering it and shooting it and doing all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so for whatever reason, I got into my head that I wanted to SBR it, okay? I wanted to get this, the LWRC, I think that's who makes it, their PDW, which is a, it's like a micro um, uh, stock, okay? And I wanted to put that on it and just make it a short, little, little, little guy as possible, you know, small as I could get it, just for cool, okay? It would function the exact same as an SBR, so I, I don't know, or as, a, as the pistol was, but I just wanted to do that. When I, the, moving on to the, uh, the first suppressor I got, basically, I didn't, I didn't ever really plan on buying more than one suppressor, okay? Um, so I kind of just wanted to get one, I know, I knew going into it, there's no way I would buy one suppressor that would do everything perfectly. I know that. that. That suppressor doesn't exist. They have some that come close, I think. Never used them or touched them, but from what I hear about them, they come close. But I knew I couldn't get everything. But I kind of wanted to settle on something that was inexpensive, um, that I could get as easily as I could get, and then that I could mount on basically everything that I had. Okay, and at the time, I just had AKs and... Uh, uh, Actually, I think at the time I just had one AK and then like one or two ARs. And that was it. Um, and I had a Glock, but I don't think I had it threaded. So anyway, I wanted to get a suppressor that would mount on all this stuff. And basically, again, long story short, I ended up choosing the the Kestrel um, uh, the Kestrel 762 AK. Okay, and basically, it seemed to be the best all round. Um, suppressor that I could get for around five six hundred dollars. Okay, I think it was five ninety nine or five something seventy five or something, something like that. It was in the higher five hundred, and for at the time that was the cheapest one that I could find that met all this criteria. Okay, and it's opened up as a lot. There's a lot of reviews on that out there, and I'm going to do one later. Not yet though. Um, but you can shoot up to like a nine millimeter out of it, and so I was thinking this is great because if I ever get a nine millimeter carbine or whatever, you know, an AR-9 or something, then I can shoot it suppressed with this, um, with this suppressor. And even at the time, I can go ahead and shoot it on my AK, I can put it on my ARs and everything. And again, at the time, I didn't understand all the little, um, uh, 
all the quirkiness, whatever, of how suppressors work, you know, and how they, uh, you know, it might work on an AR, okay, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work really well on an AR, you know what I mean? Like, like a, 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 a 30 caliber can can work, okay, but it's not going to work as good as a 5.56 can on an AR, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. I didn't know all that at the time. Okay, I was kind of green and new to the whole, new to that whole thing. So I decided to go with that can. I used it. It was great. Everything worked. It's perfectly fine. So now let's talk. And, and I had both, and they, and they were both worked great. Okay. And now I've moved on, and I've kind of matured in my understanding of, of how everything works. Understand? A li- I'm no lawyer, so don't don't quote me if on law stuff, whatever. But I understand a little bit more now than I did back then. Okay, and stuff has changed from then to now. So, basically, if I was to advise somebody, if if they were looking, let's just take for instance, if somebody was going to build a Mark 18. Okay, I've been doing that kind of stuff for a little bit, so it's on my mind. I've been thinking about it. Um, it's just the best example that I can figure out right now. But if you're going to build a Mark 18, Mod Z or Mod One, I don't care. Um, okay. That, if you're going to build it completely correct, it's going to have to be an SBR, right? Because it's a short barrel rifle, 10.3 inch barrel. There's no there's no way around that. It's either a pistol or a rifle, okay? Basically. And you can buy, most of them, you can buy them as a pistol and then shoot it and then get your SBR um, tax stamp and all that kind of stuff for it. Get your paperwork back and then just throw on a stock and you're good to go, okay? Um... But when you really get to thinking about it, if somebody's going to build one of those, what I would tell them, okay, and I'm probably not going to say this as refined as I, that's why it took forever earlier. I couldn't figure out how to refine my statement on this. But if somebody was to do that and they wanted to get a suppressor for it as well, I would, I would encourage somebody, unless there is really a really good reason, the only really, really good reason I would say to get an SBR is if you really, really want that stock, okay? Because with modern day stuff, my understanding of it, I didn't see, I haven't seen prices and everything on it, but I've seen pictures and stuff online. Um, and I think uh, I think it was released at SHOT Show this year, I believe, 2018, um, that they now have like uh, retractable uh, pistol braces, okay? So the thing before with pistol braces, and I'm kind of beating around a bush, so please hang with me. The thing with pistol braces before is you had you have the old SIG brace, okay, weighed like 30 pounds, not really, but it was big and, and hunky and heavy and it looked ugly, but it was a brace and it worked, people shouldered it and it said it was great, okay? And that, that was one of the only options at the time. Then the next big thing that I noticed coming about was that CAC blade, okay? And people's argument with that was that it's too skinny, it's too small. It hurts my shoulder. I can't have a good uh, uh, rest with it in my shoulder. All this stuff, okay? So one was too big, the other was too small. Now there's there's all these intermediate things. SB Tactical makes them now, and they look, and I'm, I'm sure there's other companies out there, that it looks and it functions way, way better, okay, than all the other ones before. I still like the CAC. It's per- perfectly fine. I don't use the SIG brace anymore because it's big and hunky and I don't like it. But the CAC ones, I have no issue with that at all. It's hard, all right? It, you, can, you can secure it down, and you can still mortar uh, uh, your rifle if you get a ca- uh, stuck case or something. The main concern people, not concern, but issue people have with all the uh, uh, all the rubbery ones is when you go to mortar, it kind of has a cushion, you know? So it doesn't mortar as well, and that's basically it. Maybe if you painted it, the paint would chip off or something because it's you know, rubber and it gives whatever. Anyway, that's the main issues with with the pistol braces they have now. Okay. And there's not much issues with this. So what I'm saying is if you were going to build like a Mark 18, I would say spend your time and money on getting a suppressor. Okay. Versus spending your time and money and waiting for your stamp and all the stuff on an SBR. Because if you think about it, an SBR, and I think across the board with all NFA items, whenever you go state to state, okay, if you're going to travel, there are certain things you got to like fill out paperwork and let this the, let let the state you're going into know that you're bringing in this firearm, and it just gets kind of complicated and stuff like that. But um, 
if you have a pistol, like a Mark 18 pistol, well, it's a pistol, okay? So you don't, there's no paperwork. You can go build it today, and there's no paperwork. It's fine. And for, for those people that are paranoid about, like, I don't want to get any NFA stuff. I don't want my fingerprints on file. I don't want government knowing what I have, da 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 Well, go get yourself an 80% lower, build it, build it as a pistol, and put a brace on it. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily a get around because there's, there's pros and cons to having one or the other. I mean, the main pro of having an SBR is you can use whatever kind of stock you want on it. And if you're in the clone world, then it's correct, okay? As correct as it can be without getting an actual, like, you know, uh, select fire lower, all right? And if you have the money to do that, go for it. I don't care. I don't have the money to do that. Um, but those are the main benefits to getting an SBR. All the all those benefits, it's really only just those two. The, the availability of being able to put stocks, all, any stock, really, on your gun, and then being able to... Uh, be able to say that it is a correct whatever, you know, because it is a rifle, you know, it doesn't have a, a brace on it, that's really the only thing alright, so going on to the other side if why would you want to get a suppressor, well depending on what suppressor you get you can put it on multiple firearms, okay like, for instance, I have two right now I have that, that Kestrel um, the Hunter Town Arms, the Kestrel 762 and that will work on basically any of my ARs that I put a, the attachment on, the quick detach, muzzle breaker, flash hider, um, it will work on my uh, my CZ Scorpion, okay, because it's a nine millimeter, and it'll work on my AKs. And I've shot it on my 30 out six, okay, and I've shot it on my 308. It works, okay. It's not the best at all, you know. The best thing that I've gotten it to work with is my nine millimeter, and it worked perfectly for that. You shoot uh, free ammunition, they're 165 hush. Yeah, that's quiet. That's really, really, really quiet, okay? You shoot 300 black out of it, it works okay. AK, it works okay. 5.56, five, it works okay, you know? But it's not the best. But if you only had one, it would work well enough to be able to go through all those different guns, okay? Um, the other side of the coin is you could, if you had one that's very specific, like the suppressor I have on my Mark 12. That's a very specific suppressor, okay? And really... It's not going to hop around from one gun to another. It's basically dedicated to that gun. Okay, you can get the attachments, you know, to put on like a regular M4, but really, you're not really going to, most people aren't really going to do that. It's not a quick detach kind of thing. It, it's a precision. It's basically, it, it's a, it, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, a, of an analogy for it, but it, it's a specific suppressor for a specific gun. Okay, so th those are two sides of the coin there. You can get a suppressor that works for everything or tries to work for everything, or you can get a suppressor that works for one very specific piece of hardware, okay? Another thing to consider is if you just have a bunch of ARs and you're not worried about, um, uh, let's say you're, you're, you're not worried about going between different calibers, okay? You just want a 5.56 suppressor. Then I think it was again last year, um, uh, Yankee Hill released a 5.56 Turbo okay and that is like i don't remember what the msrp is on it but it's around 400 dollars, like street price okay and they're like back ordered and everything i don't know how long it would take to get one i've never held one or touched one i've just read about them um but from what i understand it's basically going to be about the same size as my kestrel okay but it's a, it would be a dedicated 556 suppressor so it's going to have better sound than mine because it, it seals everything off a lot better. It uses the same, actually uses the same mounting hardware. Okay, so you can still mount it between your different guns, but it's only like 400 bucks. Okay, and, and the benefit of it, if you're just if you're just buying one versus the other, buying a suppressor versus buying an SBR. If you have an SBR, yeah, you'd have to. There's really, to me, not not a whole lot of benefit to having one because it's just for your stock. It doesn't do anything necessarily. It just gives you the ability to put a stock on the gun. That makes sense. With the suppressor, it does do something. It, it, it reduces your noise. You know, you can hunt with it. You can shoot with it without ears. You know, you can do all that, all that stuff. And you can bounce it between different guns rather quickly, depending on which one you get. Um, but the SBR, it doesn't, it doesn't really have that advantage. It's mainly a cool factor. That's my opinion. Okay, other opinions are out there, but that's my opinion. So, let me know what y'all think. Let me know what you think about that. Um, again, like if, if somebody was to ask me, 
should they get an SBR? Should I mean they're 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 ready to get an NFA item? Okay, should they get an SBR or should they get a suppressor? My first question to them would be, why would you want to? Why would you want a? Uh, why would you want either one? Like, what's what's your motivation to getting one versus the other? Okay, if if they really think that there's some super advantage, like if they're like, well, I want to shoulder, you know, my pistol or whatever. It's completely legal, and the only people that are going to say it's not legal to shoulder uh, braces and stuff on on an AR pistol, the only people that are going to say it's illegal or whatever are people that are super paranoid about whatever. They don't understand the law. They're really, people that just they don't understand. They don't understand that it's completely legal. There's nothing wrong with it. You can do it. Okay. Once you get over the fact that you can shoulder it and you can use it just like a rifle, exactly like a rifle. There's really not much, and, and and with the availability of the different braces they have these days, there's no reason, except for that cool factor, okay, or being clone correct, there's no reason to spend your your tax stamp money, and your time, and get prints and, and all that stuff. There's no reason to do all that for an SBR, in my opinion. Okay, this is mainly for like um, ARs and stuff like that. For your exotic firearms that have specific uh, uh, stocks and stuff like if you had an Uzi or something like that, th- it is different. Okay, I'm mainly, mainly, mainly talking about the AR platform and even probably even like the uh, the AK. Okay, because you got braces and stuff for that nowadays too. And then I'd ask them about the suppressor. You know, what 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 are you wanting in the suppressor? If they're just wanting a one for all, they make like the uh, I can't remember the manufacturer, but I think it's called the the Optimus. I don't know if Griffin Armor Griffin Armament makes it or not, um, but it's like called the Optimus, and it's got a bunch of different pieces and parts to it. It's got a, it's got a booster in it, so you could put it on a pistol, and it would function on a pistol. You can put different baffles in it and shoot like Magnum stuff out of it. You can do a lot of things with that suppressor, and I think it's only like a thousand dollars, only a thousand dollars. But if you were just going to buy one, you could get it, and it's user user serviceable, and you can switch out your parts and do stuff to it shoot it through different platforms okay or if you just have a bunch of ars then go get yourself that yankee hill um 556 turbo for like six hundred dollars out the door six or seven hundred dollars and you're done that's you know with your tax stamp you know with your local sales tax depending on where you get it and all that all that stuff you could do something like that so that's what i would tell people again let me know what y'all think all right am i crazy for thinking that is there is there another another really good reason to get a SBR to go through the hassle of getting all that registration. Is there another reason? If there is, let me know. I just can't think of one besides a cool factor and besides having something that you can call clone correct. Again, this is on like AR and AK platform. I know other 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 guns are different, okay? Let me know what y'all think. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching, appreciate you subscribing. See you in the next video.